now that we have well, 32 people, I think we <laughs> uh, come close to the plateau. And so today it's a particular pleasure to welcome Alessandro Giuliani from University of Roma Tre and Centro Linceo Interdisciplinare uh, uh, B. Segre. <laughs> Beniamino Segre, sorry. <laughs> Emilio. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I think most of you uh, know, of course, Alessandro. He's uh, one of the uh, prominent representatives of the constructive uh, uh, physics school at Rome. He uh, did his PhD in 2005 under the supervision of uh, Galavotti and Mastro Pietro at University La Sapienza. Then he went as a postdoc uh, first to University Tor Vergata and then to Princeton. In Princeton, he was in the group of um, Elliot Leap. And uh, I think uh, there was even this was a very successful postdoc also for our community because I think. Uh, as Alessandro is maybe one of the most important connecting links between now this constructive physics school and the, the, the school of Lieb and others who work with different methods, exact solutions and uh, variation, variational approaches to, to the many body problem. And so uh, um, Alessandro is uh, somehow an expert in, in, in both of these uh, very different approaches and also plays a very important role uh, because of this particular uh, singular qualification. After his postdoc, he came back to Rome and then he went to University of Roma Tre, where he's still now a full professor, uh, has been full professor for quite a number of years. He has a lot of distinctions and he has, uh, has been laureate of two ERC grants. The, actually, the one which is actually running is, uh, has as a title University in Condensed Matter and Statistical Physics, and I just Cites the title because it also is characteristic, of course, uh, to a large degree of what uh, Alessandro is doing. He has also been very engaged as a member of the community, in particular as an editor of uh, many of the most important journals of, uh, in, in the field of mathematical physics. And so he is a work as some, one of the prominent representatives of this Roman school, which does constructive physics, maybe with a particular accent on fermionic systems. Uh, but he has also been working on the dimer models, on easing models, and uh, and other aspects of constructive physics. And uh, maybe not to make uh, the introduction too long, so maybe come to the subject of today. There are still there are certain big beasts in the room which have been there uh, uh, forever, and there is also progress on these big beasts. And so. Uh, Alessandro Giuliani will today talk about uh, quantum electrodynamics in four dimensions. And the title, as you see, it is Renormalization at All Orders for Lattice Infrared QED4 with massless electrons. So it's a nice. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Have you. And please go on. Th thank you very much. Thanks for this uh, very nice uh, introduction. Thanks a lot. And also for the invitation to this uh, very nice series of, uh, of seminars. Um, so um, today, uh, um, yes, I will uh, uh, present as much as I can of, uh, of a joint uh, work uh, uh, as uh, often happens <laughs> to me in progress since uh, too long with uh, Marco Falcone and Vieri Mastro Pietro. Uh, this is a project for which uh, somehow the, the technical uh, details uh, we, we are concluded since a few months, but we are proceeding too slowly in writing it up, but I'm, I'm still... Uh, uh, I, I, I think that uh, the, 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 the topic really matches uh, well with the, with the topic of this series of seminars. So I, I, I thought it would uh, be nice also for some feedbacks from, uh, from, uh, from the audience. Um, uh, so the, uh, as, I, as I will explain, this is uh, very closely related actually to a work that uh, Christophe uh, did uh, in, the, in the 90s. Uh, and uh, um, so let me start. I, I, I will... Uh, uh, there will be a, uh, after an introductory part, I will spend some time on the definition of the model, and then I will move to the more technical part, and I will see where, uh, where I manage to get. So uh, just a, a, a couple of slides of general introduction. So here is, um, is uh, in short, the goal of constructive quantum field theory. So it's to define an interacting quantum field theory by exhibiting a Euclidean correlation satisfying uh, osterwalder schrader axioms. Uh, so if one succeeds, uh, this guarantees the existence of an analytic continuation uh, to real-time correlation satisfying uh, uh, white one axioms. And the, usual, uh, and the usual strategy is to start from a regularized uh, uh, functional integral uh, of this sort in which uh, uh, this is a Gaussian part uh, with cutoffs, uh, finite volume uh, and finite ultraviolet cutoff. Uh, 
and Vn is a bare action. And uh, uh, typical, at least in the approach I have in mind, uh, this uh, um, has to be analyzed uh, by Wilsonian renormalization group in such a way to, um, uh, to take uh, the limit of removed uh, cutoffs. Um, and um, okay, there are uh, several cases in when this program succeeds that I will uh, list uh, in, in, in the next slide. Let me just mention that uh, a recent alternative viewpoint uh, um, that emerged uh, um, after the works of uh, Ayer, Gubinelli, and, and many others, uh, Weber, and so on, is uh, to construct uh, um, um, uh, Euclidean theories of this sort via uh, stationary measure of uh, SPDs. But this uh, is a topic I will not touch in this, uh, in this, uh, in this talk. Okay, so this strategy uh, and methods, uh, uh, those of Wilson and Renormalization Group, uh, uh, were successfully applied to a number of non trivial uh, uh, models. Uh, uh, here I list uh, a few of the most important ones uh, uh, ultraviolet um, uh, 5 4 in D dimensions uh, in, in low dimension, D equal 2 and 3, and uh, triviality and, and uh, um, and in D equal four, where uh, recently the triviality conjecture was uh, uh, was fully proven, um, um, uh, infrared five four four uh, in uh, dimension uh, larger equal than um, uh, sorry five four D in dimension um, uh, larger equal than uh, than four. Um, uh, Tiering and Latinger models in, in two dimensions. Um, infrared uh, five four uh, models in dimension uh, three or smaller uh, in uh, situations where the propagator uh, uh, is the one associated to a fractional Laplacian with appropriate uh, exponents. So uh, this is a model of uh, uh, somehow uh, um, uh, easing uh, easing models with long range interactions, uh, roughly speaking. Um, other class of models that were uh, successfully constructed in, the, in this uh, uh, way uh, are uh, um, infrared graphene and vial uh, semi-metal models uh, um, in so in three and four uh, space-time dimensions. Uh, QED four with massive photon, and um, oh, to continue with this list, uh, infrared QED uh, in dimension two or larger with large electron mass. Uh, ultraviolet QED uh, in three dimensions uh, and um, uh, ultraviolet uh, uh, pure SUN Young Mills theory in dimension three and four. Uh, so there are many, many contributors uh, to the, the solution of these problems and uh, to the solution of uh, um, uh, many related problems. Here is an uh, is, um, uh, incomplete list of uh, contributors. Um, and um, um, quite uh, quite um, uh, unsatisfactorily, I would say, uh, in, in this, li this list does not uh, uh, include uh, um, uh, QED4 with small electron mass and, uh, um, uh, and uh, the electroweak model, or uh, say, say infrared versions of the electroweak model. Uh, both theories, uh, QED4 with small electron mass uh, uh, and electroweak model, are expected to be uh, asymptotically free in the infrared and to have an ultra, a Landau pole in the ultraviolet. So uh, we expect uh, not to be able to uh, construct uh, continuum versions of these uh, theories. But um, okay, but this is actually okay. The, the, the modern view uh, is that um, this uh, should be thought of as effective theories making sense below a certain. Uh, uh, ultraviolet cutoff scale, say the grand unification scale that is much higher than, uh, than the scale of LHC. So uh, ideally, one would like to, to, to define these models fixing an ultraviolet cutoff at scales much larger than LHC and then construct uh, uh, the, the, the theory in the infrared. And uh, um, there is no conceptual obstacle to, the, to, to complete this program, but of course, there are a lot of uh, technical, uh, technical, pro uh, uh, te te technical problems. Uh, still, uh, I believe that this is a, uh, is a doable goal for mathematical physics for the next uh, decades. I, I don't say that this will be solved in, uh, in a few weeks, but uh, I, I think it's doable M more than, uh, say, the, 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 the mass generation problem in Young Mills theory. Ma it's much, much easier, <laughs> I would say. Um, uh, of course, before uh, being able to construct QED4 uh, with uh, small electron mass, at least uh, we, we, we need a satisfactory construction at all orders. 
And uh, I would say that not, uh, not, not even that uh, is, uh, is available uh, um, uh, in, in a sense that I will clarify, because of course there are, uh, there are a few important works uh, on, the, on the topic, uh, in particular those by uh, Feldman, Hart, Rosen and Wright, and, and, and one by Keller and Copper. Um, uh, I don't find this, uh, the, the, this approach completely sa satisfactory for reasons that I will uh, uh, explain uh, uh, immediately, but I'm, I'm open to discussion. In particular, I'm happy that uh, Christophe is here, so I, I, I may have uh, uh, overlooked some, uh, some of the um, aspects of these words. In any case, the, 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 um, the, the, um, the problem, even at the level of construction of the theory at all orders, is the conflict between Wilsonian renormalization group and word identities. Um, uh, this is, uh, this, this is um, the, the use of word identities uh, uh, within the Wilson renormalization group is something that is extremely useful. Uh, it's uh, notoriously hard uh, and complicated for many technical reasons. But in the last, uh, in the, in the last years, there has been progress uh, uh, on, on this topic, and in particular, in collaboration with uh, Vieri Mastro Pietro and Marcello Porta, we applied in several condensed matter situations uh, um, uh, ideas uh, uh, in which we uh, combine word identities uh, uh, with um, constructive uh, Wilsonian renormalization group in contexts like uh, um, uh, the theory of graphene or of vice semimetals. Well, graphene and vice semimetals uh, in the infrared they, they they look like Dirac fermions with uh, short range interactions. So it's uh, it, it, they are uh, I mean uh, relatively close relatives. Uh, to, uh, to QED in three and four dimensions. So the, the, the idea is to revisit uh, some aspects of the theory of uh, QED4 in, in view of uh, some um, uh, uh, recent progress we made uh, on, on, on the theory of uh, um, graphene and vice Um Okay, so what are the basic features um, I um, require for uh, uh, saying that the lattice gauge theory model for QED4 is satisfactory? Okay, so. I, I, I would be happy of a model in which uh, I, I fix an ultraviolet cutoff uh, in some way, uh, 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 I, ideally at a scale much larger than, uh, uh, than uh, the, the scale of, of the experiments at LHC. Um, I would like to have uh, a, a small uh, or even vanishing uh, electron mass. So of course, the physical scale is small uh, but, um, and, and not zero, but uh, typically you, you have to understand the case of zero mass to be able to, to get uh, a sensible uh, um, uh, convergent expansion at sufficiently small electron mass. And I, I would like to define uh, uh, the, the model in such a way that at least uh, in, in, in finite volume, the, the model is non perturbatively well defined. So, if, uh, if we, uh, so I would like, first of all, uh, to introduce a model uh, with these features and be able to, to, to analyze this uh, a model of this kind at all orders in renormalized perturbation theory. And I, I'm, I'm sort of confident, or at least uh, uh, hopeful, that uh, once this is succeeded, uh, that, that once we succeeded in this, uh, next the methods of Balaban, in particular, in the form that uh, um, uh, in which Dimok adapted them to the study of uh, uh, of QED in, in three dimensions uh, in a series of in ultraviolet uh, uh, QED in three dimensions in a, in a remarkable series of, of recent works. Uh, will in perspective allow us to, to, to complete a non-perturbative construction of the model, but this, this has to come. Okay, so let me uh, discuss a little bit uh, uh, more the, the, um, uh, a couple of uh, key features uh, uh, that I find uh, unsatisfactory of the works of Feldman, Hart, Rosen, and Wright, and, 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 and that of uh, Keller and Copper. Uh, so these are two works in which the authors uh, um, uh, um, studied perturbative renormalizability of QED4 uh, um, uh, via uh, Gallavotti Nicolotris in the in the first work and via Polchinski's flow equations in the second. I mean, nothing to complain about the methods; <laughs> they're both uh, perfectly fine. They both use momentum ultraviolet uh, cutoff. Um, uh, which produces non-gauge invariant, non-gauge invariant running coupling constants. And uh, in order to cure the emergence of these uh, terms, uh, the, 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 the two um, the two collaborations uh, use two different strategies. So, in the work by Feldman and collaborators, uh, in order to uh, preserve the validity of word identities uh, um, after the integration of the ultraviolet degrees of freedom, the authors implement loop regularization. 
get the introduction of some uh, fictitious fields, uh, one fermionic and, bo and two bosonic uh, fictitious fields, uh, uh, each of which uh, uh, we, we, with action uh, of this sort. Uh, here, uh, I runs uh, over these three copies uh, of fields. One of these is fermionic and two of them are bosonic. Okay, this, uh, for the bosonic field, uh, this uh, uh, A phi squared term, um, is uh, unstable uh, uh, if uh, A, uh, which is a fluctuated field, which can take uh, any sign, uh, as the wrong and uh, as the wrong side, uh, as the wrong sign. So uh, ter terms uh, um, terms of this uh, form in the direction makes ma make the model uh, unstable uh, from the point of view of uh, constructive uh, of the constructive approach. I mean, the, no problem from the point of view of purely perturbative. Uh, uh, approach, but uh, from the point of view of uh, if uh, we are willing uh, sooner or later to construct the theory, terms of this sort uh, uh, prevent uh, uh, one to to, uh, to 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 fully construct the theory. Um, uh, okay, Keller and Copper use a, a different uh, um, uh, approach. They don't use a loop regularization. They just uh, um, uh, they, they they just um, uh, start with the momentum cutoff. And uh, in order, so in, in principle, they, they, they can produce non-gauge invariant uh, terms uh, like uh, photon mass uh, or uh, um, uh, self-interaction among uh, photon terms uh, like uh, A to the four. Um, um, so in order to, so terms of this sort would, uh, would um, uh, violate, um, uh, would, would make the system violate the, the um, uh, word identities. Um, so in order to, to, to kill these terms uh, in, the, in the DT infrared, uh, the authors introduce uh, uh, non-gauge invariant counter terms to be fixed, and, and they, 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 they show that they, they must be fixed in a unique way uh, so to guarantee the um, uh, validity of word identities in the infrared. Okay, this is uh, conceptually fine, uh, um, um, but uh, uh, if, we, if we intend to use this model in perspective to construct the theory, we must be sure that uh, the, these counter terms one adds uh, on the um, ultraviolet scale uh, have the correct sign. In, in, for instance, if we add uh, a, a term, uh, a negative term, uh, negative a to the four, the, the model becomes unstable and there is no hope to construct it. Um, okay, in, uh, um, uh, in my understanding, uh, the, the counter term with a to the four, for instance, uh, uh, has the wrong sign. Uh, there is a paper by Bonini, D'Atanasio, Marchesini in 94, computing uh, the counter term at lowest order and showing that uh, it has the wrong sign. So uh, this scheme, uh, even though, again, fine from the perturbative point of view, seems uh, to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, to have this problem if one intends to go beyond uh, uh, perturbative constructions. Um, so today I will present the uh, results of, uh, of a project with uh, Marco Falcone and Vieri Mastro Pietro, uh, in which we extend ideas developed uh, uh, by myself, Mastro Pietro and Porta in the context of bi semimetals on the construction of all order in renormalized perturbation theory of a lattice gauge uh, uh, model of QED4 uh, without the previous drawbacks. Um, so the good features of our model is that uh, um, uh, in the for uh, in the Bayer Hamiltonian we introduce only one uh, um, uh, gauge invariant counter term uh, for the electron mass, and th th this is uh, natural and we one one needs it. Um, the regularized model is non perturbatively well defined for Bayer electron mass sufficiently small in finite volume. Um, and uh, at the perturbative level, the electric charge flows to zero logarithmically in the infrared uh, and drives the photon wave function renormalization to diverge logarithmically uh, as uh, expected by in, in standard uh, QED. Okay, so uh, this is the overview. Let me now uh, describe the, the, the model uh, in, in some detail. I mean, it, it, uh, it, it, already the description is relatively technical, so I would like to spend some, some time and I, uh, I invite everybody to, to stop me and make questions if anything is unclear. So we, we live in a four-dimensional descriptorus uh, uh, um, uh, Z to the four with uh, uh, lattice spacing uh, L. Um, uh, um, uh, mm, 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 mm. What did I write here? Uh, uh, no, sorry, this is uh, minus n. So this, <laughs> this n should be thought of as large 
and two to the minus n is the lattice spacing very small, sorry. Uh, L is the size of the box to be sent to infinity. Um, so, so this is a, a portion of a four-dimensional uh, hypercubic uh, lattice with lattice spacing two to the minus n, sorry. Um, this defines a cellular complex consisting of the vertices uh, of, the, of the lattice, the oriented edges, uh, uh, oriented faces, oriented uh, three and four cells. Um, and this, uh, uh, this um, uh, vertices, oriented edges, and et cetera, are the, um, the natural domains for defining uh, um, so-called p-forms, uh, functions uh, on vertices, oriented edges, oriented faces that are odd under orientation flip. Um, so here, um, uh, um, the, the electron field and its derivatives, the photon field and its derivatives will be uh, defined, uh, uh, will be uh, functions on the vertices, edges, oriented faces, and so on. For instance, uh, the electron field will be described in terms of um, uh, Grassmann four component uh, uh, zero forms, so, so functions on the vertices. Uh, which uh, um, I will call psi bar x psi x uh, with, uh, say, anti periodic boundary conditions. Um, the, um, uh, the derivative, uh, uh, the, the discrete uh, um, analog of the mu psi is played by the uh, discrete differential of psi computed on edges x mu from x to x plus uh, uh, the nearest neighboring direction. So this is the, uh, the discrete differential of psi uh, on the edge uh, x mu, just, uh, ju just the usual uh, discrete derivative. And similarly for, uh, for psi bar. The photon field uh, will be a zero average uh, one form, um, um, one form uh, a x of mu with periodic boundary conditions. Uh, we will uh, uh, we will need uh, uh, the discrete differential of a, which is defined on on faces. So for for each uh, uh, for each uh, x, uh, we 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 have uh, x plus uh, e mu. Let's say x plus e mu, and uh, um, and the face of this sort uh, uh, defined by x and the two directions mu nu. And the differential of, of a, which is a function on the on the edges, uh, is a function defined on the faces, uh, and this uh, this object plays the the role uh, of f mu nu in the in, in the discrete. We will also need the discrete divergence of a, which is a function of the vertices, and this plays the role of uh, minus uh, um, uh, divergence of a. Um, okay, so uh, these are the basic objects, and we aim at building a lattice U1 gauge theory invariant uh, under this uh, gauge transformation. So psi, psi and psi bar transform with e to the plus i alpha e to the minus i alpha with the prefactor here, which is the uh, Bayer electron charge times uh, square root of, of the photon wave function renormalization. And A simultaneously transforms like A plus uh, um, uh, um, derivative, uh, the, 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 the gradient of, uh, of, of a scalar function alpha. So here alpha is a zero form and the alpha is the discrete uh, gradient. Uh, once again, En is the bare electric charge and Za of N is the bare photon wave function renormalization. So how do we construct a, a lattice uh, U1 gauge uh, model of this sort? Okay, okay. this is uh, very standard. Uh, uh, goes back to the uh, two proposals of, of Wilson or uh, related proposals. Uh, so here we will use a, a, a proposal a bit different from the standard one uh, by by uh, by Wilson. So the, we we choose a bare action that uh, has uh, morally this uh, this form, but we will have to regularize it as uh, I will discuss soon. So the, the bare action is the form of, uh, uh, of a kinetic term for the photon and, uh, um, and the kinetic term of the, uh, of the fermion with uh, uh, coupling uh, um, uh, with, uh, with the coupling with the photon field uh, uh, fixed in such a way that uh, the overall uh, action is uh, gauge invariant. So the, the, the kinetic term for the photon is just, uh, um, uh, if you like uh, the, the discrete analog of f mu nu f mu nu Re uh, remember d d a at the face mu nu is the analog of f mu nu uh, and okay we have this uh, wave function renormalization to be fixed uh, in an appropriate way so that uh, the, the the model is well defined in the frame 
this uh, interaction part uh, is uh, uh, is uh, psi bar gamma mu uh, the mu psi uh, to understand minus uh, um, uh, pl pl plus the, the the complex conjugate plus this term here I will comment about this is like uh, d mu psi bar d mu uh, d, d mu psi and then there is this uh, um, um, uh, electron mass counterpart. Um, okay, so the, this, uh, um, okay, uh, a few comments about uh, uh, the, first of all, the meaning, uh, the definition of the terms in this, uh, in this formula here. Um, so gamma mu are uh, four-dimensional Euclidean gamma matrices, uh, so generators of the algebra in which uh, the, the um, uh, anti-commutator of gamma mu gamma mu is uh, twice uh, delta mu nu. So the uh, a canonical choice is gamma zero, 0, 1, 1, and gamma j 0, i uh, sigma j minus i sigma j 0, with sigma j the Pauli matrices. Uh, uh, this dA of psi is the covariant derivative of, of psi. So it's something where uh, the shifted, so remember that the standard derivative is just the psi of x plus, uh, um, uh, plus uh, L e mu. Uh, minus psi of x divided by the lattice spacing. Uh, here, uh, um, the, 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 shifted, uh, the shifted field is weighted by this uh, e to the i a to guarantee that uh, uh, these two terms transform in the same way uh, uh, under gauge transformations. Um, OK, so this, uh, these terms now are, uh, are uh, gauge invariant. This term here uh, is the um, is the so-called uh, Wilson uh, Wilson term. R is the Wilson mass. Uh, any parameter larger than zero. Uh, this is uh, uh, introduced uh, to guarantee that uh, um, the the, um, uh, the the the, uh, the the fermionic propagator uh, is singular only at k equal zero in the in uh, momentum space. And new n is the electron mass counter term. Uh, so this will be fixed. Uh, in such a way that the, the dressed electron mass uh, is what you want, for instance, zero. But uh, once you understand how to do it for zero, uh, you understand how to do it for, for any small value of the, of the dressed electron mass. OK, so we would like to give sense to this uh, functional integral or some, uh, some regularization thereof. So we, we want to take e to the minus uh, this uh, action I considered, uh, average it. Uh, um, uh, and, and use it uh, to, co to compute the uh, average of observables in this way. Here, here uh, integral dip psi is a uh, Berezin or Grassmann integral, and dA is the standard uh, Lebesgue measure on zero average uh, real one, one to ones. So functions on the edges. OK, um, there is a standard problem here, uh, because uh, notice that we, don't, we didn't use, uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, in the standard, uh, in the original Wilson proposal, uh, a, a, um, a, 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 an action for the photon that is uh, uh, periodic uh, in, uh, in A. Uh, we, we, we used a, a, a sort of non-compact um, um, uh, bare action for the photon. So this, uh, uh, this anything of this sort uh, is uh, is uh, trivially infinite due to the null direction uh, induced by the gauge transformations. Uh, so we, in order to to have uh, uh, so the, the standard solution to this uh, is to introduce uh, a, a gauge fixing term, uh, a sort of chemical potential that uh, uh, that uh, uh, in average fixes the uh, the fixes the gauge of the of the photon field. So this uh, uh, is typically implemented by adding to the uh, to the um, uh, standard f mu nu f mu nu term uh, a, a term like psi um, um, uh, divergence of a squared. Uh, psi is any positive uh, parameter that is the gauge fixing parameter. Uh, ideally, we would like to, that in the presence of this gauge fixing parameter, uh, um, uh, averages of uh, gauge invariant observables are, uh, are not uh, affected by the value of, of psi. And this is, in fact, uh, the, um, uh, the case. Um, but before I comment on, on this, uh, let, me, uh, let me mention a couple of uh, important uh, facts uh, in, in, in my 
So uh, first of all, uh, this model, um, uh, contrary to uh, previous models that were uh, analyzed uh, in the literature, at least in my understanding, I, I, um, th this is uh, uh, well defined uh, in finite volume, uh, finite um, uh, um, uh, finite volume, finite cutoff, uh, and uh, finite everything. <laughs> so, uh, if you take any uh, uh, all the cutoffs finite and uh, uh, en nu n sufficiently small, a priori non uniformly in the size of the box and uh, in the uh, size of the ultraviolet cutoff then uh, this functional integral is well defined uh, so it's even analytic in uh, in in, in uh, en so this uh, th this is good so this is a bare model that at least is non perturbatively well defined so it, it is a good starting point for in perspective and on uh, uh, constructive uh, uh, analysis of the model so the proof of this uh, is uh, is uh, relatively simple. Uh, use uh, BBFK3 formula for uh, both the bosonic and the fermionic truncated expectations, and um, bound the kernels of defective potential using uh, uh, the fact that the interaction is bounded because it's mediated by e to the i a with a real. So this this these are phase factor with absolute value one. And um, uh, for uh, as far as the fermionic uh, truncated expectation are concerned, you can use uh, gram Adamart uh, uh, bounds to, do, to bound the determinants in the fermionic truncated expectations. So you do this uh, in one step, so no multi scale, and you get analyticity for EN and UN very small, uh, I, I mean, so non uniform in the in the um, uh, box size. But at least you have a starting point, you start from something that exists uh, in a non perturbative sense. Um, so other remark, very important, uh, is that uh, as uh, hoped, uh, as expected, if, uh, uh, if your observable is gauge invariant, then uh, um, the average of O with respect to this, uh, uh, to this measure here is independent of Xi. So the, the, as it should be, then this uh, gauge fixing term doesn't, uh, um, uh, doesn't affect the value of the gauge uh, of the average of gauge invariant observables. So it, it, it does the job. Um, the proof of this is just uh, sit down, uh, perform the gauge transformation in the functional integral, uh, use uh, um, uh, integration by parts uh, with respect to the A fields, uh, and you find out uh, a remarkable cancellation that is uh, well known. I mean, you, you find uh, uh, somehow, uh, the, 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 um, essentially, the proof you, you, you can find, uh, I don't know, in Weinberg's book uh, of quantum field theory, and that, uh, it's relatively straightforward once you know what to prove. Okay, let me, uh, let me add the remark that, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, the, the, the experts in the audience uh, already know this. I, when, when I realized this, I, I was pretty surprised. And, so the, the, the Xi independence uh, of the um, average of gauge invariant observables also uh, all, also also in the presence of a photon mass, or equivalently of uh, an infrared regularization on the um, on the photon propagator that cuts off uh, uh, infrared modes. Um, so this is. Uh, um, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, I would say is a bit counterintuitive because a photon mass uh, term in the action uh, breaks uh, the, the uh, gauge invariance. Um, but um, nevertheless, uh, the sign depends of all uh, uh, remains true for gauge invariant observables. Notice that actually even the gauge fixing term uh, breaks uh, gauge invariance. So maybe it's not uh, so uh, surprising, but uh, Notice that uh, in the presence of a photon mass, uh, the, the, um, uh, these averages uh, are still uh, Xi independent. Of course, they are not uh, uh, photon mass independent. So the, the, there is something special uh, about the, the non-gauge invariant uh, gauge fix in terms of Xi. And the, the, special, uh, the special thing also uh, holds in the presence of uh, photon mass, in which case, once again, the, the model is not anymore um, uh, gauge uh, gauge invariant, not even neglecting the, the gauge fixing term, but it's just, uh, if you like, um, uh, as a covariance with respect to uh, phase transformations of the uh, of the fermionic field. But this is enough uh, to get this sign dependency. Is uh, somehow 
the, the, this, uh, this requires a little less than, uh, than uh, full gauge invariance. And th this is something that is uh, interesting here and in more, in, in more general situations. Okay, so if, 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 you, if you like, uh, you, can you, you can use this photon mass uh, as, uh, as an artificial uh, regu uh, infrared regularization that may be used uh, uh, to, uh, for instance, uh, uh, to to um, uh, to to, um, uh, to perform uh, uh, in in a slightly uh, technically simpler form the, the infrared limit. So, for instance, you can fix uh, uh, this photon mass or this uh, infrared cutoff on the on the bosonic action to whatever two to the h star, perform the thermodynamic limit, and then only afterwards uh, take h star to minus infinity. This uh, simplifies a little bit some technical uh, issues, but uh, okay. Um, I just mentioned here for, for completeness, also because we use it uh, here and there. Uh, okay, so the Xi independence of O allows us to make our favorite choice of, uh, of Xi, uh, so uh, our favorite choice of the gauge of the photon field, and we prefer to use the, the so-called Lorentz gauge, uh, um, uh, divergence of A equal to zero, which corresponds to Xi uh, to infinity. In this gauge, the regularized photon propagator is purely transverse. Uh, and uh, if we have this, um, uh, this uh, cutoff of the very low uh, Fourier modes, uh, it reads like this. It's the Fourier, um, it's the Fourier uh, transform of one over, say, k squared of this uh, projector in the transverse direction. This, um, this uh, sigma k squared, this sigma k is just uh, the, the lattice uh, counterpart of uh, k mu. And this uh, absolute value sigma k squared is the lattice counterpart of uh, absolute value k squared. And uh, this is a cutoff uh, that, uh, if you want to introduce this uh, this uh, infrared regularization, cuts off the the the, the, the Fourier modes below uh, two to the eight star. Okay, so in in this gauge, uh, the the generating function of correlations is uh, uh, is this one. Um, and um, uh, so here I isolated the, the Gaussian parts of the uh, integral over psi and over a. Uh, this is the the Gaussian uh, Grassmann Gaussian integration with propagator uh, one over let's say the the the, the lattice version of k slash i k slash plus this term which is uh, the uh, this is the Wilson mass term is something that. Uh, uh, is uh, behaved like k squared uh, in the vicinity of uh, k equal zero, and uh, is such that uh, uh, k equal uh, pi 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 pi, for instance, is not uh, a zero of this uh, denominator. Uh, P uh, dA is the Gaussian measure with propagator, the, the photon propagator that, that, that I showed uh, earlier. Uh, okay, this phi is, uh, is an external uh, field uh, coupled to psi. And uh, J, notice that J is an external field coupled to A in this way, coupled to A and Psi in this way. Uh, this Vn is just the, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the I Psi A that I introduced uh, before, minus uh, the Gaussian part uh, uh, of Psi independent of A that uh, I added and subtracted in order to reconstruct this, uh, this reference Grassmann Gaussian integration. Um, so uh, remember, I psi a was the, the, the electron mass counter term plus uh, a sum of terms of this, this form uh, with uh, the, the covariant derivative rather than, than the standard derivative. So uh, essentially, this Vn is just we're just adding and subtracting uh, the, the, um, the, the, this uh, psi bar gamma mu the psi terms uh, with uh, the standard derivative rather than. Uh, the covariant one, and we isolate uh, this uh, the, the the Gaussian part corresponding to this uh, in the, into this reference uh, Grassmann Gaussian measure. Um, okay, uh, gauge invariance at fixed uh, cutoff infrared cutoff scale on the boson bosonic propagator or equivalently for any finite uh, um, uh, photon mass. Uh, gauge invariance implies this exact identity. So that uh, this uh, generating function of correlations uh, is invariant uh, if you uh, uh, change the phase of the external field phi and correspondingly uh, shift the, the, the external field uh, coupled to the photon field this way. And from this, we get uh, uh, differentiating with respect to alpha, we get the exact uh, identities among the, uh, the correlation functions whenever they exist. 
So there are uh, um, there are um, uh, exact lattice word identities for the um, for the, uh, the, the this uh, J J J J correlations. So these are uh, like uh, at lowest order in perturbation theory. These are the so-called sun diagrams, and here uh, so these indices are just the indices. Uh, uh, associated with the um, with the vertices of these external legs, and this uh, represents the contraction of one of these uh, um, uh, of this diagram with respect to, to one of the external momenta flowing, say, in this uh, in this line here. This is uh, so. This uh, essentially uh, this uh, is the version of uh, if you have here uh, mu nu sigma blah blah blah. This is the uh, a version of p mu times the value of this uh, diagram equal to zero in, uh, at the lattice level, and this is uh, um, uh, this is the so-called uh, vertex word identity. It tells you something about uh, uh, the um, uh, the contraction of the vertex uh, with uh, with an external uh, p mu and uh, uh, the difference uh, of the uh, dressed. Uh, and all, all the dress propagators uh, uh, here. Uh, there is this important uh, En square root of Zn that appears uh, in, the, uh, in the right side of the idea. Um, okay, so here, these are the definitions. Uh, these are just uh, appropriate uh, functional derivatives of the generating function uh, W with respect to Nj fields. Uh, here, the, this gamma mu is the functional derivative with respect to 1j and 2 phi's and so on. Okay, so notice also that uh, uh, this guy here is gauge invariant. Uh, so is, uh, if you like, is a uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a good uh, physical observable. While these uh, these uh, things here are, are not gauge invariant, uh, but still are useful in order to uh, this identity still is useful to uh, to, uh, to, um, to to obtain some uh, relevant cancellation in, uh, in perturbation theory. Um, the, 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 the action uh, and the generating function is invariant under other symmetries uh, uh, on top of the um, uh, gauge symmetry, is invariant under parity, uh, discrete rotations, charge conjugation, uh, and self adjointness. And uh, uh, the use of word identities and of discrete symmetry uh, can be used to reduce the number of independent running coupling constants and to control their flow under uh, RG. So next steps to discuss uh, in the remaining, uh, what, uh, 15, 20 minutes, I don't know, something like that, uh, are uh, how to set up uh, a normalized perturbation theory via Wilson and uh, via Wilson and RG scheme, and how to solve uh, this key problem. So at intermediate scales, uh, uh, cutoffs break gauge invariance, at least the way I, um, uh, I will define the cutoffs. Uh, so non-gauge invariant terms are temporarily generating, uh, generated uh, uh, along the flow. And we would like to use word identities in order to show that uh, this uh, sort of uh, uh, spurious uh, uh, non-gauge invariant terms uh, at intermediate scales uh, 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 remain small a priori. Um, OK, so let me uh, try to give some ideas uh, of how uh, things go. Um, so the Wilsonian randomization group is set up uh, uh, in, uh, um, um, uh, in a relatively standard way, uh, very similar to the way, for instance, that was used by Feldman and company uh, in the, their 88 uh, uh, important work. So the, the difference compared to, to, to their work uh, uh, at this level is not uh, particularly profound. The, the, the one important difference uh, was uh, in, in the definition of the, uh, of, the, of the model, of the bare action, if you like. And there will be differences in how to uh, treat, uh, uh, how to control the flow of the non-gauge invariant terms. This will be an important difference, even though I'm, I'm not sure I will be able to enter uh, too much uh, into the, the details uh, on uh, how we really control this, these terms. Uh, so we, we slice uh, uh, fermionic and photonic propagators in momentum uh, space. And correspondingly, we write uh, the, uh, the electron and photon field as the, um, uh, as, the um, uh, as the sum of two independent, uh, uh, two independent fields with uh, propagators uh, uh, supported at scale n and on smaller scales and use the addition principle for the reference uh, Gaussian uh, parts of the measures. 
So we integrate uh, first uh, the degrees of freedom on, on scale n. Uh, after integration, we re-exponentiate the result, thus defining the, uh, the, the effective action on scale n minus 1. And we iterate, integrating out the degrees of freedom on moment uh, 2 to the n minus 1, uh, blah, 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 up to whatever, uh, a, a, any lower scale. So and after uh, uh, the integration of the first uh, uh, n minus h scales, we are, we are left with the, with the model that uh, um, is um, structurally similar to the original one with the new uh, effective potential and some, uh, some parameters that, are, uh, that have changed along, uh, along the way. So here, and, and also the propagator changed. So uh, the, propag the fermionic propagator is essentially the same as before. But with uh, with this uh, prefactor that has changed, uh, we started with one, and uh, no, we started with z uh, psi n, and we uh, after several steps we have uh, uh, this uh, this uh, renormalized prefactor, renormalized wave function renormalization parameter. Um, the photon propagator also has the same structure but a different prefactor here. Rather than one over z a n, we have a one over z a h. And um, uh, the, the, the VH itself, of course, uh, of course, is different. This, uh, in general, is, uh, is an infinite linear combination of monomials in Psi, Phi, and A um, with kernels that are invariant under these discrete symmetries of the model. At intermediate scale, notice that these kernels are not invariant under uh, uh, lattice gauge invariance because uh, the, the uh, slicing in momentum space uh, um, uh, broke explicitly uh, lattice gauge invariance. Um, OK, so the, the statement of that sort is proved uh, inductively. Um, uh, uh, an important uh, um, uh, step that we, um, uh, the, that we perform uh, at each iteration is that V of H is decomposed into the so-called local part, which includes the so-called relevant and marginal terms in the renormalization group jargon plus a remainder that is better V8, the renormalized or irrelevant part. The scaling dimension here is, uh, uh, is the following. So you, if you take a monomial uh, of order m in psi and m in a, the, the scaling dimension is this one. If you have uh, p and q derivative, uh, the, the, the scaling dimension decreases accordingly. So uh, relevant and marginal terms are those uh, for which uh, this combination is positive or zero. And uh, uh, using parity, discrete rotations, charge conjugation, sample jointness, uh, one finds that there are uh, uh, nine possible relevant or marginal terms. And um, there are four of them that are gauge invariant, uh, uh, depicted, depicted in blue here, and five of them that are not. So here there is uh, a, a, an electron mass uh, term. Uh, a, a, a kinetic energy of the electron, uh, a, a, a coupling, uh, say, uh, electron strength, uh, the coupling uh, a, a um, photon, uh, um, uh, photon uh, electron, uh, and uh, a term, uh, a, a transverse kinetic term for the photon. The, the, these uh, five non gauge invariant terms include a, a, a photon mass term. Uh, a term of the same form of the gauge fixing term, and so on. A, a, a self interaction among photons, uh, and uh, yeah, so on. Okay, the terms that are uh, these, these terms here, this one and this one, that have the same structure as the kinetic terms for the electron and the photon, can be reabsorbed in the, in the Gaussian reference measures uh, uh, PD psi and PDA. And at each step, uh, um, uh, inserting them in the, in the reference Gaussian measure uh, 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 as the effect of modifying step-by-step uh, step, uh, uh, this, uh, this factor Z psi H and Z A H that appear in front of the, uh, uh, to renormalize the, 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 um, the, the electron and photon propagators. OK, so after having uh, reabsorbed these guys uh, into the, the reference Gaussian measures, we rescale uh, they rescale the fields uh, um, uh, so that the interaction now uh, is, is measured in terms of, uh, uh, of a field psi with uh, wave function uh, renormalization z psi of h minus 1, and uh, similarly for a. So at, each, uh, at this point, uh, uh, we, we 
uh, we, we decompose uh, once again uh, the, the, the measure into a part uh, um, uh, supported uh, at um, um, a momentum scale 2 to the h and uh, uh, those on lower scales and um, and we integrate um, so what's the structure of the local part of this uh, of this potential so the, the um, after having uh, absorbed the, the kinetic terms uh, of the electron and the photon, we are left with this uh, uh, this structure of local uh, of local terms. So there is a, um, a term that um, uh, has the structure of uh, uh, of an electron mass uh, counter term, uh, one term uh, that is uh, effective electron strength times the coupling, the, the minimal coupling between uh, photon field and electron field. And then the spurious uh, non-gauge invariant terms, uh, a photon mass term, uh, this term that uh, is uh, reminiscent of the gauge fixing term and so on. Okay, and here there are also the relevant terms. Uh, as I said, we integrate uh, things on scale H and uh, we end up uh, with, uh, with an effective potential on, on next scale. So this procedure allows us to express the VH as a function of a sequence of this, uh, of this coupling constants, some of which are nice. Uh, that are, these are those that you find uh, in the in the book of Weinberg, uh, those are the, the, the only ones you find if you use dimensional regularization. And then you have some spurious ones uh, that are this, uh, um, this uh, photon mass term uh, and, and so on. Um, so the, the iterative procedure that I uh, sketched uh, uh, also gives, uh, uh, provides uh, 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 recursive equations for these guys in terms of those on the previous scales. These recursive equations are known as the beta function equation that uh, uh, very schematically uh, um, uh, takes, uh, takes this form. So uh, a, a very, um, okay. And this procedure goes on unvaried until we reach uh, the, the, the H star. So the, the, the scale of, the, of this artificial, uh, of this artificial uh, infrared cutoff on the, on, on the photon propagator that uh, we introduced for technical convenience. Uh, once we reach this, this scale, uh, there are no uh, photonic degrees of freedom left. So we're left with, with, with a purely Grassmann theory that is essentially the same, actually is the same as the effective theory for, uh, um, for um, um, uh, vile semi-metals uh, in, uh, in three plus one dimensions. And uh, as discussed, uh, for instance, in our papers uh, with uh, Mastro Pietro and Porta on uh, vile semi-metals, uh, um, this is a theory in which the scaling dimension, well, is the same as the, as the one I showed before, but without uh, uh, photonic fields. So the scaling dimension, for instance, of, of, a psi, uh, of, a, of the kernel with n external legs, uh, uh, electronics external legs, is 4 minus 3 over 2n. And this is negative for n equal 4. So quartic fermionic interactions are irrelevant in the infrared, and the theory is uh, asymptotically free in the deep infrared. So somehow, if you have a, 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 a cutoff on the uh, bosonic uh, degrees of freedom at scale H star, the theory below that scale that has only uh, um, uh, fermionic degrees of freedom is sort of trivial. Uh, the, the running coupling constant has freezed at their values at, at each star. And so if you are able to, to construct theory, uh, things uh, uniformly in H star, uh, you, you, you can then uh, uh, take out, uh, uh, remove uh, at the end of everything uh, H star to minus infinity. And this is a way to define uh, the, 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 the theory in the limit of infrared removed uh, cutoffs. Okay, a standard fact, uh, going back at least to Gallavotti Nicolò, uh, used uh, among others uh, by, by Feldman, Hard, and collaborators in their important uh, 88 work, is that uh, uh, this uh, procedure I, I, I vaguely sketched allows one to write the kernels of the H as, a, as formal power series uh, in the running coupling constants with coefficients that are bounded in, N, in weighted L1 norms by, by uh, constant to the N, N factorial. And this uh, constant to the N, N factorial is the best you can do uh, in, uh, in a theory that contains uh, bosonic degrees of freedom. No, nothing better than this is expected to, uh, to hold. Uh, this is uh, somehow bounds of this uh, sort uh, are sometimes referred to as uh, uh, bounds uh, uh, proving the local Borel summability of the theory. So um, truncations of th this means the truncations of the series give sensible predictions as long 
as the running coupling co constant are small enough, but uniformly in H. So how, even if we uh, accept the idea of truncating the series at order, uh, I don't know, 100, which is typically fine <laughs> you know, for, for a computation, how do we prove uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, the sequence of running coupling constants uh, uh, remains small uniformly in H? Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, we have to solve the solution to the beta function equation. Uh, since uh, uh, we, we only have n factorial bounds, uh, this uh, beta function equation, the way we defined it, uh, doesn't make sense uh, uh, beyond perturbation theory. Um, the coefficients of the beta function equation satisfy m factorial bounds. So, in order, so the 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 the, the consistent definition within this perturbative scheme of the of the flow of the running coupling constant is to to study them uh, uh, via truncations of the beta function equation themselves. So, if you intend to study the theory a truncation at n equal uh, one hundred, you should truncate everything at order one hundred, both the beta function equation and the uh, and, and, and the um, uh, formulas for the effective potential. Okay, so let's uh, uh, use the last, uh, I don't know, three minutes, five minutes <laughs> to sketch uh, how, we, um, uh, how we study the flow of the running coupling constants. Um, so again, this is the set of running coupling constants. These are the good ones. These are the sort of artificial spurious one, but uh, we have to live with them, at least if we use the scheme I, I, I sketched. Uh, if, uh, if things are, are, are if, if the world is, uh, is nature is good, uh, it should be uh, the case that E of H goes to zero uh, in this way, uh, as, uh, as you find uh, predicted in any um, uh, quantum field theory book, again, uh, for, for instance, in Weinberg's book. And all the other running coupling constants uh, are, are smaller than uh, order uh, e squared of h, at least. Uh, uh, this uh, should be uh, true uh, only if we tune the, the, the electron mass counter term so that the dressed uh, electron mass is uh, zero, for instance. So in the scheme I, I described, uh, the, the dressed electron mass is, uh, is zero, but uh, a simple modification would allow one to, to, to get uh, uh, similar uh, con construction for dressed electron mass that is uh, as small as you like. Okay, notice that we have at disposal one free parameter to control uh, nine running coupling constants. So it, it, one needs a lot of cancellations to, to be able to control the flow of so many constants with uh, just uh, one uh, free parameter. Okay, so uh, the, the vague idea is uh, we use uh, new n to control the flow of new h. Uh, in order to control the flow of these three guys, uh, we, uh, we, we compute the beta function at second order, and we, uh, we recognize uh, that uh, at dominant order, the result is the same as you find in any quantum field theory book, uh, like uh, Weinberg's book, um, showing that in particular, the, the, the beta function for the electron at second order is negative, and this drives uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the running electric uh, charge in the infrared to zero exactly in this way. And this one over six pi squared is the second order uh, uh, beta function coefficient of the, uh, of the uh, component of the beta function for EH. So the real issue is to, to understand what to do with this um, uh, spurious guys. So the idea there is to use uh, is to use uh, lattice gauge invariance. Uh, so uh, let me uh, use this uh, this uh, this last minutes to comment about this. Uh, let me maybe so let me start with the with the simpler uh, uh, simpler guy to analyze the, the the this spurious artificial photon mass that uh, you apparently generate at intermediate scales. So in order to study the, the, the flow of MH, let me consider a sequence of auxiliary theories with photon infrared cutoff at scale H star equal H. So the flow of uh, everything, in particular of M, uh, at scales uh, above the cutoff uh, uh, is independent of the infrared cutoff. So uh, since we are sliding, slicing things uh, uh, with uh, momentum slices that are of compact support, uh, up to the point uh, where, when, uh, when you reach uh, the infrared cutoff, you don't see that there is an infrared cutoff. So things go exactly in the same way for any 
uh, theory with uh, uh, cutoffs uh, um, uh, with with cutoffs H star. Uh, um, um, uh, okay, on, on on scales above them. Uh, sorry, I think I'm creating confusion, but I'm I'm, I'm starting to <laughs> to recognize that it's very late. Okay, so um, the the things go uh, in the standard way up to the uh, to, to, to this uh, cutoff scale and below that uh, we have this uh, irrelevant purely fermionic theory where uh, uh, where uh, running coupling constant frees essentially to the values they have uh, at, at scale h star um, the word identity for the polarization bubble says uh, that uh, we have this exact identity uh, satisfied by the by by this uh, kernel here um, and this is notice this is the generating function with the uh, infrared cutoff at h star equal h. So what is the structure of uh, w uh, zero j? This is the structure. So so you have a, a, a local part uh, m of h, and then you have a non-local part uh, plus contributions coming from the integration on uh, scales below. The, the this uh, this uh, cutoff h star so you have uh, here we have you have either non local terms uh, that vanish at p equals zero or terms that have been uh, generated uh, uh, um, at scales below uh, below h this guy here barely fails to be twice differentiable at p equals zero due to a, due to a log singularity so from the from this uh, um, so notice in particular that this is uh, continuous at uh, p equals zero and differentiable. So using uh, this guy here at p different from zero and then sending p to zero, using uh, this regularity of h mu nu uh, p, it follows that uh, m of h plus uh, the, the local part of this guy, which is the sum of the contributions generated by the fermionic integration on the scales below h, is bounded by, uh, no, sorry, is equal to zero. On the other hand, this guy here, since uh, it's uh, uh, it's the sum of this contribution, can it can be bounded this way? Uh, this is uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 scaling uh, uh, of the contributions in this uh, irrelevant uh, fermionic theory uh, on scales below h, and this is bounded uh, uh, uniformly in h by e squared of h. So this tells you that m of h is uh, uniformly bounded. Uh, uh, so uniformly is bounded by by, by uniform constant uh, times e squared of h. Okay, uh, ideas is the same for the uh, marginal non gauge invariant uh, couplings, but there uh, things are more subtle. So, for instance, if you consider terms uh, uh, the, the couplings uh, proportional to a to the fourth, uh, you, you intend to use the, the similar uh, similar equation. Uh, you you want to analyze the uh, the structure of this uh, of this guy here, but now the problem is, is that this guy, contrary to the uh, to the to the previous uh, h of p uh, h mu of p, I just uh, I, I just mentioned. Now dimensional, this is uh, barely fails to be continuous, barely fails to be continuous. So uh, things are more are, are, are more subtle. So a priori there is a log uh, singularity at zero for this guy. However, it's, uh, it's sort of easy to identify explicitly what are the terms uh, uh, that are potentially responsible of this uh, log singularity uh, and those that are not. So uh, all the terms uh, in the deep infrared uh, in this uh, Grassmann uh, irrelevant theory that you get uh, on scales below H that involve uh, an interaction vertex, they have, uh, the, this a, these have a dimensional uh, gain that makes them uh, Make, make, make them uh, continuous. And so those terms uh, give uh, overall a contribution that is small, and, and we are happy with that. We are left uh, uh, with uh, one explicit diagram, which is the sun diagram of order four with uh, ultraviolet cutoff uh, at scale. So here, uh, the, 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 the running momentum of Q is smaller than two to the H. So it's a sun diagram of order four with an ultraviolet cutoff. And this can be computed explicitly. You, you sit down and uh, it's something that you may find, find in some quantum field theory, standard quantum field theory books, but typically you don't find because uh, 
typically standard quantum field theory books are written with dimensional regularizations. So, but uh, if, if you sit down and compute things uh, with momentum regularization, you, you, you find the explicit coefficients here, uh, A and B. So I can, there is a T here uh, that I missed. Uh, so A and B is uh, one over six pi squared or whatever. I, I computed it in, in uh, uh, and, and at the end of the day, the, the explicit computation of this shows that uh, this, uh, the, this term, uh, even if potentially dimensional logarithmically divergent, at the end of the day is uh, finite because uh, of a cancellation that, uh, uh, that you, can, uh, you, you can prove by an explicit computation or you can prove via uh, uh, the use of word identities in the presence of ultraviolet cutoff, but I cannot really enter into this. So this is uh, vaguely the scheme we use to control the, the spurious artificial non-gauge invariant couplings that we produce at intermediate scale. So somehow we start with a bare action without uh, non-gauge invariant counterterms. Our scheme, which is certainly not optimal, produces spurious terms that are non-gauge invariant at intermediate scales. But this, uh, at the end of the day, uh, go to zero uh, as, far, as fast as uh, some power of, e to, of, of e h in the deep infrared. In fact, uh, e h using uh, the um, uh, using uh, uh, second order computation of the beta function goes to zero in the deep infrared, and uh, so it drives uh, uh, the flow to zero for also for all the spurious uh, counts. Okay, I think uh, I should uh, conclude, and I apologize for the for um, uh, being uh, uh, for the delay. So we introduce a non-compact Euclidean lattice uh, QED in four dimension with vanishing electron mass and extension to small electron mass uh, is straightforward once we understand that. Contrary to previous models uh, studied in the literature, at least in my understanding, uh, um, um, uh, that were proved to be perturbatively very normalizable. Our model has the advantage of being well-defined non-perturbatively in finite volume uh, if the bare electron charge is sufficiently small, a priori non-uniformly in the infrared cutoff. And uh, um, so the, the, the goal, uh, of course, of the next years would be to, 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 to give non-perturbative sense to this uh, in, with estimates uniform in the infrared cutoff. Um, today, I reported just uh, a, a construction at all orders uh, for this theory. So we derived the um, uh, n factorial bounds uh, on the uh, on the um, uh, kernels of the effective potential uh, that are uniform in the uh, in the infrared cutoff. And we control the infrared flow of the running coupling constant by combining uh, the use of lattice word identities falling from lattice gauge invariance which allows us to show that uh, spurious non-gauge invariant terms at intermediate scales flow to zero in the deep infrared, uh, plus the well-known structure of one loop uh, beta function for uh, E and for the wave function renormalizations. Okay, uh, a few, um, a few uh, perspectives. Uh, the, the, the main message I already sort of gave, but uh, that I want to stress uh, even more, is that uh, in, 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 my, uh, in my view, uh, uh, I, I think that the program of fully constructing the model uh, appears feasible. And, and this is a fundamental problem for mathematical physics for the coming years that uh, I think it would be very important to, uh, to, to, to solve. And uh, I, I think uh, um, that uh, it would be a, a first step towards understanding uh, uh, more challenging and even more physically relevant models such as uh, uh, lattice models of uh, for the uh, electroweak uh, uh, interactions and uh, okay and then uh, who knows <laughs> okay thank you very much and sorry again for the delay so oh, thank you very much uh, alessandro for this beautiful and very rich talk uh, so what are questions comments of the audience <laughs> there's manfred yeah thanks for this great talk um I was wondering about your uh, uh, comments about stability. Uh, I, so there are two parts of my question. One is very general. I do remember that Magnin, Rivasso, and Senior in their work on Young-Mills theory, they also had an, uh, an A to the four counter term. Yes. In the calculation, it had the right sign. And in QED, it has the wrong sign. Did you look into the details? Why? No, no, I, I confess I did. In fact, I, I, I thanks for this uh, 
thanks for this uh, um, uh, this comment. Uh, uh, I mean, I uh, in fact I am curious uh, to to know, uh, for instance, if Christoph uh, uh, checked the sign of uh, of this. Uh, I made some effort for computing the, the, this uh, this uh, this um, a to the fourth term, and I did the computation like three times, and every time I was getting a different sign. So I, I then look, I, I found that in this paper of these guys, there is the, the computation. So I said, ah, okay, very nice. And then I, I the, their computation of the A to the fourth term matches with, of course, <laughs> one of the attempts I did. So I was happy to exclude the others. But then I noticed that there was another term that they computed, the, which had the, definitely the, 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 the sign different from the one I was computing. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I must... I, I, I'm aware that there is this sort of footnote or some or comment by Rivasso uh, that um, uh, also that in, in my in, in my memory that comment is not really um, yeah I, I don't remember if there is really a detailed computation there but oh, we're no, just, just a comment, fact. As you say. Yeah. yeah exactly so uh, I, I don't know I mean. Uh, uh, it's one of those things that uh, one would feel reassured if there are uh, three or four people who check the sign and uh... but more importantly actually for, for what you told us i mean you generate these spurious terms and of course in perturbation theory this doesn't make a difference but did you check the signs of the coefficient no, okay in fact uh, very good so <laughs> let, let me now comment so um, th th there are uh, two things. So on the one hand, uh, to be really sure that this, this claim I found is correct, one should recheck it because I'm not aware of uh, many checks of this. But of course, uh, notice, uh, notice that one should check the sign of nine uh, couplings. So it's something that at least uh, is, <laughs> is annoying. If, if, uh, so if, if one has a scheme that avoids that uh, and avoids to have uh, non-gauge invariant counter terms, uh, uh, so uh, uh, the, the minimum is that this uh, is, is is easier. Uh, it, it may be from, it, it may be crucial if one of the signs of these nine uh, counter terms of lowest order is wrong. Just let, there, uh, 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 let, just let me comment on this yes. of this term. Uh, I made a calculation with a master student of this term with the heat kernel regularization. So there are also different kinds of regularizations. I think this. Maybe these people, Bonini et al, did it with a, with a sharp cutoff. Yes, yes, they did. And if you do it with the heat kernel regularization, you find, I, I, I have to look it up, uh, you find at least that the, the divergent part of uh, its lowest order is zero. Uh, due I to zero. Some, and, and, yeah, due to some uh, symmetrization, uh, uh, you have to symmetrize the thing with respect to the Lorentz indices, and then the leading part drops out in in, uh, in in one loop okay but it may depend on the choice of the count or, or the cutoff no. yeah because you violate gauge invariance no, so in no. any case you cannot exclude that okay mm -hmm. so so yes it's not impossible that there is one special choice of the cutoff for which these guys have the of the right sign but uh, it should be at least uh, checked more carefully than what has been done uh, so far in my understanding so there is an, another issue that, uh, as you say, uh, once you start generating this, uh, you, you have to worry about uh, what happens at intermediate scales. Okay, so this uh, is a good way to, to add the comment that I, uh, I wanted to, to, to make uh, anyway. So, uh, the, the, of course, the best thing would be to, uh, to have a scheme that does not generate any, uh, any of those. Okay, the, the, um, uh, here uh, John Dimock, uh, which I, I saw uh, was in the audience, could uh, comment more if he, if he wants. So in my understanding, uh, um, uh, John has, uh, um, has uh, um, a specific way of, uh, of uh, fixing the gauge, different from the gauge, gauge addition of a gauge fixing term uh, that I proposed. And uh, uh, a multi scale scheme that he applies in the context of ultraviolet QED3, for which uh, he, he, he managed to show that uh, at all scales, uh, the, 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 the effective potential is uh, exactly uh, gauge environment. So you don't have any of these spurious terms. The, the, in my understanding, the, the, the gauge fixing condition is a, sort of, is a bit more complicated in the sense that uh, it, it was borrowed by, uh, by the Balaban's works, uh, if I understand correctly. Again, correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, 
Um, so it's based uh, it, on, on, a, on a, um, a hierarchical definition. Uh, so, the, so there is a hierarchical condition that corresponds to, to a specific uh, way of imposing uh, gauge fixing. But with that, uh, you manage to, uh, to avoid the production of any intermediate spurious uh, thing. So there are now two things. Either uh, one uh, uses the fact that a priori, the overall sum of everything must be gauge invariant uh, to, to say that uh, even at intermediate scales, uh, these uh, spurious terms don't break uh, stability, or uh, one uh, tries to implement uh, uh, better versions of the ideas I proposed uh, using this uh, uh, gauge fixing uh, scheme uh, by, by DMOC. Uh, this is maybe the best thing to do, uh, but uh, I don't know if uh, if John has more comments. Uh, uh, they they are welcome. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. What you say is is exactly right. Um, you uh, gauge pres gauge invariance is preserved exactly all, all through the uh, renormalization transformations. Um, but you can't do it with momentum cutoffs. You, you seem to have to do it with block averaging, you know, block spin averaging, which preserves gauge invariance at each stage. So, yeah, so there's no issue with, uh, um, Ability. with counter terms that aren't uh, invariant. Okay, yeah, so I, 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 these, uh, I mean, are, are the, the, the kind of, uh, yes, uh, the, uh, of uh, available technical tools that are uh, spread out in the literature that I believe uh, could be the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, sort of bricks uh, to, to, to build the, 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 the construction of this theory. So I, I'm sort of uh, optimistic that putting together considerations like those I presented with uh, analysis uh, of the sort that uh, John used uh, in uh, ultraviolet QED3, we, we can make progress on this, on the, uh, on the construction on the, on, on, of this model. Uh, let's see, I think that that would be a, a, an important result for constructive quantum field theory, maybe would also help in changing the, the view of uh, constructing quantum field theory in, in the whole community. I think it would be important to, to really push a bit in this direction. So maybe Stefan has a question. Uh, yeah, I had a, a more general question. Uh, going back to the very beginning, your ideological slides um, about going back from Euclidean to Lorentzian. Um, if you have a, a theory with an ultraviolet cutoff that isn't removed, at, um, then there's a question um, how, whether you can still go to the Lorentzian, it seems yeah, to me okay. uh, you, yes. shouldn't get, you shouldn't be able to, to do so, and um, or you shouldn't be able at least to get a theory that's fully Lorentz invariant. In, in, okay, uh, that the fact that is not. That? Sorry, if, if, uh, I yeah, so my question is is really suppose you have this uh, this Euclidean theory with a cutoff, um, what do you get on the Lorentzian side? So you you clearly you're going to get something, but but by what means exactly and and um, um, to what extent do you violate Lorentz invariance and so on? Okay, uh, so um, one thing is how to reconstruct uh, something. So to reconstruct something, I think that the correct uh, scheme would be to actually not, uh, uh, strictly speaking, keep uh, the, the uh, ultraviolet cutoff uh, fixed uh, uh, period, but one should fix uh, the, the, the cutoff uh, in, the, uh, in the spatial directions uh, and then uh, take, uh, take a limit in, the, in, in one of the four directions uh, to, and, and then reconstruct. Uh, uh, so take an ultraviolet limit only in the time variable. That should be feasible. And, uh, and then uh, re um, reconstruct uh, via uh, uh, a version of the Osterwalder Schrader a theorem in which uh, you, you, of course, uh, we, you, you decide uh, not to consider uh, um, Lorentz invariance among the axioms. You, you, will, uh, you will obtain a, a, a real-time theory, but with, uh, um, with just a discrete rotational invariance rather than uh, full uh, uh, Lorentz invariance. Okay, the fact uh, that you have uh, you will have uh, uh, so violations of Lorentz invariance at the scale of the ultraviolet cutoff is not uh, uh, particularly 
um, terrible. The, the, the important thing is that uh, in sufficiently, um, uh, at sufficiently low, low, low scales, uh, you have a sort of uh, dynamical restoration of Lorentz invariance. And this is what, uh, what, what we see at the perturbative level. So the, the, uh, in the, in the, um, at large distances, the, the propagator is one over k slash with corrections that depend on the lattice that are of the uh, of order uh, L k squared, where L is the lattice spacing. So the, the, this is fine. Um, I mean, the, you, if you're far enough from the, from the, from the ultraviolet cutoff, the, the, everything will be uh, at, uh, with, with controlled errors, uh, uh, Lorentz invariant. In fact, uh, um, it may be that there is an even stronger, uh, um, uh, stronger restoration of Lorentz invariance. This is uh, uh, this was one of the uh, open problems that uh, I didn't have time to. <laughs> so one could even ask uh, whether uh, there is spontaneous emergence of, of Lorentz invariance in a situation in which you break uh, uh, even more seriously than uh, with a, uh, with a, uh, with a lattice, because. Uh, uh, we, we have a lattice and we use the, um, um, uh, we, we use the, 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 the same, um, the, 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 um, uh, the same, uh, if you like, uh, speed of light C equal one in the, both in the fermionic and in the bosonic propagators. There are uh, interesting situations, uh, particularly in uh, condensed matter uh, models for white semi-metals where the bare um, uh, speed of propagation of the fermionic degree of freedom is different from the one of the photon. Because uh, in, for instance, in vile semi-metal, this effective uh, um, uh, linear dispersion relation is, uh, fixed, is fixed by the lattice, and the lattice may produce uh, uh, Fermi velocities that are different from, I mean, that are whatever, they depend on the hopping strength. And uh, there, there have been questions uh, uh, and, and discussions in the condensed matter literature on, on whether uh, uh, one should expect uh, uh, restoration of Lorentz invariance. Uh, so a, a flow of V of H uh, to, uh, of the effective Fermi velocity to, to the speed of light in the deep infrared. The, uh, some uh, one loop calculations that uh, have been made suggest that this is not the case. But it must be stressed that uh, even in simpler situations, there were similar computation predicting that there was no such restoration. And, um, and actually, in, in, in one of these simpler situations, uh, uh, 10 years ago with uh, Vieri and Marcello, we proved uh, so for two-dimensional graphene with uh, uh, interaction mediated by a, a, a three-dimensional boson, photon. We proved the, uh, so it's simpler because uh, scaling properties in the infrared are, uh, are a bit easier. Uh, in that context, uh, the, there was exactly the same issue. And, and there we proved that uh, there was a dynamical restoration of Lorentz invariance in the deep infrared. So it, it could be that there is uh, this uh, strong instance of uh, restoration as well. So to, to summarize, uh, I believe that for fully constructing the theory, one should remove uh, ultraviolet cutoff only in the time direction, then one would reconstruct the theory with just discrete rotational invariance. And for that theory, one should prove that at large distances, uh, Lorentz invariance is uh, dynamically or automatically restored. Maybe we go on to, to John, John Imbri. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I had a question about, um, if the electron mass uh, is set not to zero, but to some other value, then um, as you flow into the infrared, um, eventually you pass that electron mass. Uh, so if effectively then the, the electron disappears from the problem and as I understand it. And so then, then you have a purely photonic situation where maybe there's some higher order gradients term is not completely trivial, uh, perhaps. Uh, can you comment on like, do you need a change of strategy in the, in the extreme infrared? Well, uh, but, well, it's not completely trivial, but it's simpler than the one <laughs> which have, uh, you, you, you have both, I mean, massless electron. And so somehow it's contained in the construction. Um, 
So, so yes, it would be uh, somehow it's exactly as you say. So you continue up to the scale in, in some uh, the, the, uh, with exactly the same scheme uh, I described up to the scale of this uh, uh, dressed electron. Uh, well, not exactly because there are small modifications to be done uh, in uh, in the flow of the of the psi bar psi terms. Uh, you you have to distinguish uh, between those. Uh, uh, contribute okay you have to isolate the, the, those contributing to the um, uh, to the counter term uh, uh, the mass electron counter terms but uh, th these are sort of some st standard modifications so you, you 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 essentially follow the same scheme up to the scale in which you 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 get to the uh, electron mass you integrate and then uh, you you yes you continue multi-scale analysis that is of the a simpler uh, uh, subpart of, uh, of what we discussed, essentially. Oh, okay, all right. So that, I mean, like, you well, know, um, let the, me see. Um, uh, but uh, is uh, when I say simpler, yeah, because in 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 that case, uh, somehow, well, in principle, you have to control this uh, again. Uh, if you use the scheme I proposed, you have to control this potentially spurious. Uh, a squared and a to the fourth terms that you have to show that are essentially zero by gauge invariance. Uh, or you have to use a, a different uh, kind of uh, uh, block spin integration and uh, different, uh, I mean, a la Balaban or Dimok uh, to, to avoid the, the generation of those. But uh, for the rest, it's fine. I mean, you, you, you keep uh, dressing. So the, the dressing of the wave function uh, Photon wave function renormalization will be can be done, but uh, essentially it freezes also at uh, 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 those scales. So it's uh, it's simpler. You, you you get the same kind of scheme, but for instance, uh, the wave uh, the, the, the the wave function renormalization of the photon essentially stops uh, the flow. I mean, uh, it grows logarithmically up to that uh, mass and then uh, saturates more or less. But 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 yes. You, um, so you, you I, I, so that if you want, uh, or, or maybe you can do things uh, in a single, even in a single step. Uh, um, yeah, maybe I'm doing things more uh, too complicated. Maybe you can, you, you, you can just uh, uh, you uh, below those scales. You, you, you can just use uh, the same uh, scheme that was used by by Dimok uh, in '92 uh, for the. Uh, construction of uh, um, infrared QED with large electron mass, which uh, I think, again, uh, John can comment. Uh, I, I think it's just uh, a, a single scale analysis there. So somehow you 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 have to you have to use the the, the multi scale scheme up to the. To the scale of the electron mass in order to have something bounds that are uniform in the electron mass for electron for small electron mass and below that uh, scale uh, you can uh, you can sort of uh, uh, use uh, the same construction that Dimok uh, used uh, in, in that case yeah, that was too long ago for me to comment i can't remember <laughs> okay thanks uh, that that's helpful. Is, that, is this clear or yeah, I mean, I, is it so? It's sort of like having a higher higher order gradient model. Um, if if scalar fields, uh, yes, but uh, I, I guess it's crucial that uh, it's uh, it's gauge invariant, so you you don't generate certain terms that could be potentially dangerous. Oh yeah, okay. Um, but I mean, like all of your analysis sort of somehow is based upon the bad terms being of order, you know, e squared. But yeah, but e squared at that point, gone. yeah, e at that point is the fixed e square that you obtain at the at the at this scale of the electron mass. Yeah. Okay. So the so subsequent everything, flow doesn't everything freezes uh, there. Everything freezes there, and then after that, uh, the e the, the the e of h sorry, is small and is what it is. I mean, this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. So Wojtek, maybe. Thank you. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so my question is basically, uh, well, there is another approach to gauge theories on a lattice, which is analogous to spin systems. That is, you take a three-dimensional lattice and time is uh, 
continuous and real, and you define local Hamiltonians uh, in the uh, Wilson Kogut fashion. This has been pursued by Kioski, Rudolf Grundling, and eventually they, they managed to prove Lee Robinson bounds, get the infinite volume limits, uh, and well, they, they get your uh, infrared theory in infinite volume without any renormalization. For, we, for which theory? Actually, they do it even for QCD. To my understanding and what I understood from discussing with them, I, I'm not sure if it's completely true. For QED, it should be even simpler. So, I, can you compare this approach? No, I don't. I don't know this works, so I would okay, be happy okay, to. Okay, maybe if, if you send, send me an email a... with the reference, I would be happy. Okay, to, maybe I can send check. you and we discuss via email. Then, thank you. Are there further questions or comments or maybe we are already quite late so maybe I also will address my, my questions by email or so we can have a discussion. <laughs> yeah, I would be happy. Because otherwise we maybe we go out of <laughs> really fall out of time. So thank you very much again. Oh, I, or I can stay, oh, uh, Christoph, if you want, I can stay. Uh, online for a private discussion uh, a little bit uh, as yeah. you like but this is uh, the, the link is provided by Jochen so I do not know Jochen maybe also wants to finish <laughs> okay uh, so we can do it uh, then it's another link maybe yeah yeah I can I can send you if you want mm -hmm. fine uh, so uh, any other questions or comments or remarks so then uh, thank you very much again for this very lively and interesting and dense talk and uh, see you next uh, again for the next talk. I, I do not know whether it is already. Jochen, is it already? Um, uh, yes, it's in two weeks already. Uh, Alexander Stadtmeister, uh -huh. who is also in the audience still, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and meet you again in two weeks. So, goodbye. Thank oh, you. Okay. Bye. Right. Thank you very Thank much you. again. <laughs>